Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to LinkedIn Tuesday. It is uh, February 6, 2024. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on just Zoom. Facebook is currently not working. For some reason, Zoom and Facebook don't want to talk to each other today. So uh, we will be uh, having the recording. It will be available on the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the recording. For those people on Zoom, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please just enter them in the chat window. Uh, also, it's a great way to connect with other people here. So feel free to put in your contact information. Tell us who you are, what you're looking to do. Give us a couple target companies, put in your LinkedIn address or your LinkedIn address and connect with everybody else who's on the call. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org, a website to help those unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I launched a second website, careerusa.org, to help those around the United States. I have, <coughs> excuse me, I've written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. It is available on Amazon. If you see me in person, I always have copies with me. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Planner Career Focus Group, and we have a very interesting presentation coming up this Friday, and I'll tell you about that at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the Practice Interview Team, also known as the PIC Crew. Remember, your resume, your LinkedIn profile, they are not going to get you a job. All they're going to get you is a phone call. How well you practice your interviewing skills, that's what's going to get you your next job. So for more information, just reach out to DallasPickCrew.com. All right, we've got four outstanding speakers who talk about LinkedIn. They rotate through on a monthly basis. Uh, this is the first time Locke was with us. He wasn't with us in uh, January. So uh, Locke, Happy New Year. And today he's going to talk about how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies that get results. So good good morning, good afternoon, Locke. You're muted. Sorry about okay. that. You there we go. Everybody. You, did, you pushed the button that said mute everybody this time. Oh, did I? I didn't mean to. Oh. Well, anyway. I share screen and there we go. We can see it now. Well, I appreciate Jeff inviting me to come back. As I said, I was I was out with shoulder surgery just before Christmas and still recuperating at the, saw the doctor on Friday and finally got around to being able to drive. Uh, so my wife is not my chauffeur anymore. But uh, as you see, there's my bio up there. Uh, 20 with 42 years in recruiting and HR and 22 years starting in about 2001 in career consulting. And we got going from there. Do appreciate the opportunity to share LinkedIn it is probably the one number one tool in recruiters toolboxes today. Basically, I, I, I look at scripture almost every day and found it very encouraging, particularly when I was in job search mode. And one cert, one verse of scripture from Jeremiah 29, 11 is I know this, the deeds, the, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And Jeremiah was writing to the Jews who were in captivity in Babylon at the time. So it was a uh, kind of an encouraging voice for them. But that's an encouraging voice that I had when I was job hunting and thought that things were not going too well. I remember looking for a job in California after I'd been laid off and I interviewed with 19 companies. 16 of them said no. Two said, let's talk later. And one made me an offer to come to Texas. So don't get discouraged if it takes a while to find the right opportunity. And I guess the question comes up as to why are you using LinkedIn? Again, it's a question that most of us ask. It is, they say, the number one tool out there for finding a job, and it's also a tool for networking. And that's how it got started. LinkedIn has over a million users worldwide. A bit, excuse me, a billion. That's an updated figure for right now. And the first part of our presentation is going to be looking at 
how do you find a job using LinkedIn? Now that's the part we want to look at. Okay, the questions that I want to ask you is, what are you doing to attract attention, attract hiring managers' attention, okay, and recruiters' attention? Again, first impressions are vitally important. So it all kind of starts with your profile. There's a picture of my profile. Again, it's I've updated it, and we'll take a look at an updated version a little bit later. It has a good background a banner shot. I've got a good headshot there. My wife took of me. It doesn't have to be a professional photographer. You can do a selfie, but don't you want to? If you do a selfie, make sure that it, there's no glares and you've got a decent background because a busy background is not what you want to have. It's got my name, the name that I use. And my actual legal name is John Locke Alderson Jr. So when the telemarketers call me, I ask and ask for John Alderson. I ask for which one. And they say, well, John Sr. I say, well, he passed away about 20 years ago. So you have to deal with Junior. So again, use the name that you want to be called by. It makes it easier for the recruiter and avoid some awkward moments. Again, the next thing that we want to talk about is, uh, is accomplishments. Because one of the things that people look for is the in your resume is your freshness. How fresh is your resume? I want to back up just a minute for that. Again, your profile is the first impression that most people have of you. They see the first three lines. They may see your picture, your name, and the first three lines of your uh, of your mark, of your headline there. But one of the questions that people often ask, and it's something I learned as a recruiter, but I was reminded of by a presentation that Kevin Turner did, was kind of a freshness guarantee or time value. Again, how old is your profile? Again, what used to be when when you sent in a resume, and if it was on the top of the stack, it probably probably got a call right away. Those on the bottom probably didn't get called, okay? So the other thing that happens is in terms of freshness to guarantee as a recruiter, we'd have resumes that'd be maybe a week or two old. And by the time you call them in a hot job market, the people would say, why are you calling me? I've already landed a job. So that's something to think about in terms of the freshness. Now, what the freshness guarantee in terms of say products that you look at at the grocery store. You look at the, the used by date on most of the things like milk or used by on salads. I know I buy a salad and if it's, got today's date on it. If I'm not going to eat it tonight, I'm going to move on to a salad that's got a, a freshness date out maybe a week. Well, the same applies to your resume. So you want to refresh your resume in LinkedIn probably at least once a week and maybe as simple as adding a verb and taking a verb out. But again, doing something that freshens your guarantee, freshens your resume, it rises to the top of the pile because it, it, it creates the impression in terms of the computer that your resume is new. So that's one thing to think about. Um, another thing that holds true for your, your resume is your is the algorithm determines uh, how fresh the resume is, so it gives added value if it's a newer resume that's been updated. So something to think about in terms of updating your resume. Next thing I want to touch on is accomplishments. Again, people are interested not only in what duties you have, but what have you done with those duties? What were the results of performing those duties? This is a copy. Of, uh, this is one of the blocks on my uh Resume for the experience section, when I'm a recruiter at Oracle, you notice I have a five line, four lines, and a, an orphan, I guess, down at the bottom. Description of my duties that I was performing. I have two bulleted highlights of the accomplishments that I had. And I was selected as recruiter of the quarter uh, twice, you know, two, two quarters in a row. And I was the one of the top recruiters among 50 recruiters and selected from that same group and that same year to go to the club, which was an annual event for the top performers in the consulting organization. And I also included something else that you may want to think about. And that's a farewell note from my boss at Oracle, uh, Amanda Gill, when I left Oracle in 2010. I just snipped that out. She sent out an email to the recruiting staff that I was leaving. And so I just included that in my resume. But your accomplishments measure something because they add value to the experience that you say. They add credibility to it. Again, getting back to your profile, it all starts with that. I mentioned the headshot and the banner photo in the back. Okay, your name, what do you want to be called by and your headline? The headline is there on your, on your name. I dealt with one, one person in an executive networking group about two weeks ago and his resume just says executive. And that's all he says, successful executive. It doesn't tell any industries that he's worked in, doesn't tell what his skills are, whether they're in finance or in operations or general management. You want to add something more in your headline there. You have 220 characters to play with this particular one uses the pipe character. That's a key on your keyboard, just above the enter key on most keyboards. Well, you can do that and you can add that. If you use a pipe key or a backslash, you wanna leave a space on either side of it because if you don't, those are not gonna be searchable terms if they're linked together like that. 
I've also used the open to work and we want to talk about that in just a minute. Again, your goal is to get found on, on LinkedIn. And if you're not in the first 10 screens on LinkedIn, that's 10 thumbnail sketches per screen or about 100 thumbnail sketches, the recruiters are probably not going to look at your profile. So here are some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Basically, your profile, your headline on open to work, the dashboard and the about sections. And again, dashboard is one of the things to give you some information about how you're doing and your, how your profile is doing on LinkedIn. Your history, your skills and endorsements, and then how do you optimize your profile? And then what do recruiters actually search for? And then actually searching for jobs. Okay, these are some things that will increase your rating to the all-star rating. I mentioned a freshness guarantee. Well, that's one thing. All-star rating is another of those things. It gets you top of the pile. We're now, when a search is done, if you've completed all the sections in, the, in your profile, it adds to the credibility of your, of your profile. Things like your open to work or complete the about section. Here's a professional headshot, as I mentioned. The headline, what is the job title of the job or jobs that you're applying for? Use the open to work section. It allows you to list an additional five, five job titles and tell a little bit if you're willing to open, if you're open to relocation. And if so, where you're open to relocation. Your about section, it used to be called your summary, is an overview of your career and using keywords. You have 2,000 words, 2,000 characters to play with. I've seen some that are about 150 words. You're shortchanging yourself if you don't use more of it. If you have questions, you can take a look at my profile and LinkedIn. Do have, and make it easy for me to contact you. Jeff has his contact information in his banner shot. I've got mine in the first, first line of my about section. Okay. And it makes it easy for them to get hold of you. Use your, use your um, email address and your phone number as well. Again, your experience shop should be a short, usually job title. And for unusual job titles that you might have, like member of technical staff three, and I worked for companies that use those kind of job titles, put what's the actual job title that's used out in industry or what you're looking for in a job. You can put it in parentheses. Okay, make it a generally recognized one and one that you might search for and a description of your duties and some of your results. You want to try and keep each section of that to three or four, maybe five lines. And you do want to include some keywords. Uh, from your profession, shows you know what you're doing. Your skills and endorsements are vitally important, okay? Your skills, you have, now it used to be 50, and within the last two weeks, LinkedIn is up that you can now include 100. We're going to show you how to prioritize, prioritize those so that, because only the top three that are selected come up. You want to include your education, awards, and certification, professional development. Again, a lot of the profiles that I look at, as well as resumes, Simply show when somebody got their degree. They failed to talk about the awards that they have. I mentioned two in that, that brief look at me in Oracle. The certifications that you may have gained and professional development classes, attending seminars like this one. And then recommendations from coworkers and bosses. Again, you want to try and get at least a couple for your most recent positions. They, they provide vital information about you and give an endorsement basically of, of your performance. Looking again at profiles, I mean, this is my headline. What do you see in my profile? Well, you can see my name. I've got the open to work banner open here, and it gives you that block that's down below that. You can edit that with a pencil that's there. And it's a powerful platform for looking for, for people, networking and career management. So you want to create a strong LinkedIn profile to boost your, your activity level. Okay. So another question that you want to ask yourself, is your headline a grabber? Does it say who you are and does it identify what you do? Again, let's take a look at some headlines, Nanny. These are some that nothing wrong with some of these, like unemployed, probably truthful, or retired, which I am, semi-retired, that you're seeking a new opportunity. But the more information that you have, the more positive it is, the more likely somebody's going to click on it. Formerly a VP of finance tells you what about that particular individual. He worked in finance as a VP. He's probably not doing it right now. Social media strategist and content manager. Seeking a new opportunity with print and digital media experience, public relations, but marketing and corporate communications. Again, more information. Again, these are, are short to get them on the on the uh, the slide. But again, these are actual things that I've seen on profiles. Chain, supply chain, procurement and purchasing, pretty succinct. This one isn't too bad for one that's short because it gives the recruiter or hiring manager an idea. If they're looking for somebody in any of those areas, they might want to click further. Again, same thing with senior accountant. There are only about 40,000 of them in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 
Executive assistant, only 35,000 the last time I looked. So it amplifies that with edging, but she has experience in budgeting, or he has, don't want to be sexist, and about been involved in event planning. So those are just some of the things that you can do. Project manage it, idle, scrum master, and and uh, are some of the things that an IT recruiter or consultant would look for. I know that those were some of the ones that I looked for when I was doing recruiting for Oracle and for Siebel. General manager of aerospace and manufacturing, again, pretty succinct, tells who it is, but really short changes himself by not going into more detail. You can take a look and add additional information. Now they've added it. You can add adjectives with it. And you notice that on mine, and we'll show you that in a minute. You can select titles and what value you bring as well as exa examples. Here's an example of my original profile, uh, the headline that you see there. And it was checked through that headline search.com at the bottom. If you do that, the original value that those came up with uh, in that particular section, I do think I got a rating of 70% overall impression, overall and 50% impression. It jumped to 77% when I made the changes that you see there, adding some adjectives in there and the pipe characters. So that's something that you can do to check, check yourself out. Here are some other titles that you can take a look at. Again, these provide a little bit more information. Again, if you notice increasing productivity in highly regulated industries, it would be something like oil and gas or utilities, the electrical industry. Those are some things that make a difference with people. And if you should want the deck, just send me a note to lockalderson at gmail.com. I'll be happy to send you the whole deck and you can look at it. And there's also some bonus material at the end we're not going to try and cover because it's too long. I'll cut it down. Okay. Moving on down the page, this is the open to work section. If you want to do that, you notice the job titles that I've selected were professional recruiter and executive. I've started to check to uh, check career coach or career counselor from any of the drop down menus. When you have that, use the title that's there and rather than writing in your own, uh, it, it gains, yeah, gains value from LinkedIn and their algorithm. The places that you want to work, whether you want to work on site or remote or hybrid, and the location. This is a place where you can add locations if you're open to relocation. And what is your status in terms of start, starting date? Something that you can look at. And turn this off and on periodically, go in and modify it. That's one of those activities to keep your profile fresh. Have you looked at your analytics homepage? Okay, if you click on home, the analytics tools that you're there, there you notice that I had 255 uh, impressions in the last seven days. Somebody had seen that 255 times. Uh, the profile views, I'd actually looked at my profile 101 times and actually appeared in 60 appearances in the last week. So again, what you're trying to do is not only appear in the search appearances, but also in the profile, actually somebody went on through and looked at your profile. You can also use the profile to find out where the companies are, who the companies are that lo were looking at you. This is your featured section. I've listed three of the presentations. I updated that uh, Monday, I guess, yesterday, I guess. It had gotten out of date. But I've done about seven presentations and they're all on here. All the whole presentations is there. You can include things like your profile. I mean, not your profile, your portfolio. My son has a portfolio. His is called a reel. Or a, he's a mid digital media design designer, motion graphics. So those are some of the things that you can add to it that add to credibility to who you are, tell you a little bit more about who you are. If we want to go back and look at summaries, this is a particularly good summary in the about section. It's a little bit longer than I would recommend. Normally people re recommend four or five lines and then a break, as you see here, break right here on this one. Uh, but this is particularly well written. It's a, fee it's a financial planning and analysis individual. Again, FPNA mentioned there at the bottom, is used as an acronym. Most technical recruiters that handle accounting and finance know what that is, but this individual has spelled it out the first time that they used it. So that's one way to do telling about yourself. And that's a pretty good, particularly good one. This is some other ones that you can use. And LinkedIn is a little bit different in your resume. You can use the first person to talk about the things that I did. I am grateful as a partner in the second one, the first example there. So I worked at Disney World and talking about some of the things that they did and some of the competencies they have, the different areas that they worked in. Second example is, this is an area where you can use words like strategic, creative, hands-on marketer. Again, not having an example. Most of the time when I saw that in a resume, 
uh, we could consider something like fluff because it didn't give examples to support it. Again, this is an area where you don't have to do that in this section of your profile. Your experience section, yes, that's another picture of my experience for Oracle. Again, you want to have things in there to follow it. Your job title, your name, company name and dates, your duties and responsibilities, you usually want it to limit those to about three to five lines so people will read it. And then some bulleted areas of accomplishments or expertise. What were the results of performing your duties? Just to give you some idea of that. Another thing that you could do on your profile, and LinkedIn added this about eight months ago, is you can add additional sections. The two that I definitely recommend you doing is your current job. If you're not working, you want to add a job uh, for that if you're unemployed. And I'll show you what one looks like. Add a, a, a current position. Again, I titled this one Software Development Engineer. They were looking for full-time work, and they were looking for a company searching for an opportunity in financial services or telecommunications. And they started to add location there at the bottom. And again, that drop-down menu, that intelligence, use that whenever possible with LinkedIn. Another one that you could add, if you've worked in project management at all, you can have a separate page or separate listing section for each project that you've worked on. As a recruiter, when I was looking with working with software consultants or software engineers, programmers, frequently they work for consulting firms like Tata or Emphasis or some of the other firms like IBM. And they would list the project, and each project would be a full page in their resume. One of the few exceptions when longer resumes were acceptable. The next area I want to touch on is skills and endorsements. Normally, the skills that you have, they, they've upped that, and I need to change that. They now have allowed you to have 100 skills, okay, and that just changed recently. And again, as you see the drop down the menu right in here, you can click on these, and we'll add those to your and if you type in a, a skill up here in this block up here and it's not one that's recognized, it will not allow you to add that particular skill. But again, the three skills, LinkedIn will choose the skills for you unless you choose the ones that you want. And the way that you can do that is to go over on LinkedIn. These are the skills that are on this particular one. That's right for, again, talking about me. And the three dots that you see right there, if you click on those three dots, it will allow you to reorder uh, your skills and endorsements. You simply have to hold your cursor over the the uh, over the four bars that are there and hold down on your cursor and drag and drop the ones that you want. Because the ones that LinkedIn select may they are the ones that they think you're good at, but they may not be the ones that you want to see appear. Again, I have executive search, consulting, and talent acquisition. I have those professional recruiting. Even though I was a professional recruiter for, for more than 20 years, it didn't get that many recommendations which is one of the things that's down there. So that's one of the things I chose, the one that had more recommendations for that. But that's how you can select the ones that you want. The next thing I want to touch bases on is to do a search on yourself. That's box up that's there. Where you can see where recruiter, and you actually put in location, Dallas, Fort Worth area. And again, as I mentioned, there are two, in the Dallas, Fort Worth area, there are about 26,000 when I did this search a couple of years ago. I used to appear in the, in the top two pages which was the first 20 when I was actively recruiting because I was in LinkedIn about every day, at least once a day. So take a look at those. If you don't appear in the first 10 screens and you can take a look pretty quick like through those, you can go pop those open and see what the other people have in their profiles. Again, let's take a look at one. This is a lady that has recruiter. She was a senior recruiter, but recruiters are included. She has recruiter down here a number of times, talent acquisition, which is another name, and a partner, uh, specialist. She's got recruiter there and she's an accomplished specialist with experience in both staffing, another name for recruiting, and corporate environments. So she's worked in public, she's worked on the agency side and corporate environment. But you can incorporate some of the words that they have in their profile if it applies to you and see if it doesn't improve, improve uh, your, your, your rankings. The next section we want to talk about is LinkedIn and for job, actually job hunting. So LinkedIn, how does LinkedIn actually run a search? And what do recruiters search for? There are some differences there and some of the results that recruiters get. And there are two software licenses that LinkedIn sells. One's called Recruiter and um, Kurt Vandemotter uh, purchases that license. I think they're $10,000 a year per license. Midge Duncan is another recruiter that I work with on a networking group. She has chosen to do Recruiter Lite, which is only $5,000 a year. I never did pay for any of those or the premium. I just used the basic LinkedIn. But again, we'll show you some results for that. And then how do you go about searching for jobs? And how do you create job alerts? And how do you use the filters? 
So what do recruiters actually search for? Well, each section of your, of your profile gets a value, okay? And any activity gets a value as well. And your ranking, search ranking is based on the sum of these values. The highest scores appear at the top of the result. An activity level, again, refreshing that profile, is one of those things that count toward this. Another thing that they look at is for a match of your job titles. And you have four different areas that you can work with job titles. It's in your headline, you're open to work, your about section, and in your employment section. Each of those has job titles that you can use. Again, a lot of times in the headlines that I see people with, they don't talk about actual titles. They talk about functional areas that they've worked in. And again, LinkedIn doesn't search on functional areas. It searches on job titles. So just remember that. Searches on keywords and skills. Another category, those are the next thing that it does. Now we'll take a look at a sheet from Kurt Random on our search in just a second. And look at industry and specific companies. This is particularly true in things like healthcare. Typically, if you don't have experience in healthcare, it's very difficult to break into healthcare at an experience level. Although there are some areas like uh, information technology or computers that tend to be go across those areas. And look at education, okay? Some companies that used to be that advertised BS degree required. Again, they've gotten away from that due to, to pressure from, the, from Uncle Sam and the federal government and some of their regulations. Geographic location. Typically, recruiters look for, for people that are within 25 miles of their work location because people don't want to, like to drive long distances. Typically, they'll look at location and some of these searches that we'll look at if people are in other areas, people are open to travel, particularly in some of the consulting jobs that I was hiring for at Oracle and Siebel. Another one is their current and prior companies. What is your pedigree? So somebody that's worked in healthcare, as I mentioned, if you'd worked at Baylor Scott & White, you might work at Texas Healthcare. Again, those are some comparable things that you can look at. Another thing is then recruiters take a look at your summary and experience. So let's take a look at the, at the input sheet. This is the sheet from Kurt Vandemotter had shared on it, one of his presentations. Actually, there are three screens where he can input data. When he did this search, and it's been a couple of years ago, there were 710 million people in LinkedIn. He could search that entire database. And doing that, he could enter the, the three sheets that I mentioned here, things like job titles, locations, skills, companies, schools, and industries. By entering that, he could narrow that 710 million down to 70 within 30 seconds. So that's something to remember as you do that, fill out as much as you can and applies to you. This is the actual result of doing a search. This one was for a product manager, our senior product manager in the Seattle area. That was the preferred location. They'd take somebody from down the coast in San Francisco if they were available. And product management and product marketing are interrelated kinds of jobs. And some combine both, some are just one. And look for somebody who's done competitive analysis. And companies, there are a couple of companies there that are highlighted, Microsoft, Amazon, and Fluke, are all headquartered up in the Seattle area. And down at the very bottom, you notice University of Washington, also in the Seattle area. This particular search had about, about 6,900 uh, in the initial search, actually 6,856, and 2,500 of them were actually following the company. They were interested in those companies. They followed them to find out information in their press releases and things like that, new product development. So that's one type of search. The next one we want to take a look at is in the Chicago area, looking for a project manager. I mentioned project manager is one of those titles where there are a lot of them. In this particular case, when it was run, there were about 43,000 project managers in the greater Chicago area. That's typically about 50 miles. If you draw a circle from, use the compass and draw a circle around it from downtown Chicago. Only 83 of those were open to new opportunities. This one was a rather tight job market. Okay, so a lot of people weren't looking for jobs. The next one that's over there is the, is the company, connect, con, company connection. They had people that worked at their company and you engaged with, a, with their brand. They follow that company. But they were looking for a project manager again, Chicago, what they'd select, they'd take somebody from New York or, L, or San Francisco. And not only were they looking for project managers, they wanted business strategy and analytics and some of the other criteria that were on the list. And down here, they look for somebody from Northwestern University. I'm surprised they didn't put in University of Illinois at Chicago Circle as one of those. Again, so that's one of the things that you want to remember when you're searching for jobs out of the cruise ship. Well, let's talk about you now. Again, when you do search for job, if you can use the job, the search box that's up here on the top bar, there's a box up there, or you can actually search on jobs and it gives you two options. You can search for jobs and put in a title. 
If you put in a title and you haven't been searching before at another location, it will default to the United States. So you want to put in a location as well and find out what you'll do. Well, let's take a look at some actual search results that I've done. Again, I've done presentations and we did some live presentations or searching for jobs for people. This particular one for our sales rep, again, because I didn't enter a location, it defaulted to the United States. Well, from a search perspective, I said there were almost 200,000 profiles to look at. So I fault this recruiter for not having been more specific and said maybe Dallas Fort Worth, although they may have been looking for somebody anywhere in the country. I know when I was looking for uh, Siebel consultants and Oracle consultants, they can work about just about anywhere because we were always hiring them. Well, that's just some information about a basic one, but it drew a lot of people in that particular search. The next one that I did was for a senior accountant in the Plano, Texas area. Again, I selected 25 miles, and that allows you to check. You can also select on LinkedIn. They also used to have that you could select 15, but it's only 10, 5 and 10 and 50 are the only other, other options on the mileage now. Again, the date posted, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the filters in this line in just a second. But that particular one from Plano and, and the didn't select date posted had 144 results. If I were looking for a job, I'd want to click on the date posted to find, look at the more recent jobs. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. These are the filters, and this is an odd view of it because they now have it just on the left, on the right side, right third of a page when you do the filters. Again, but this is a list of all the filters that are available. They can list jobs. Most of the jobs that are on LinkedIn or any of the job boards are going to be full-time. Occasionally, they're going to be contract jobs, like I was looking for a software engineer or somebody part-time. I've talked to a, to a, a physical therapist yesterday, and she's looking for somebody. And I asked her, would she consider somebody part-time? Because I know somebody who's a physical, physical therapist who's not working right now, so I could pass that along. Internships are very frequently used by college students. I know my... my uh, Granddaughter is, is going to be interning here in, in Dallas with an insurance company this summer, and she's a, she's going to be a, a junior at Baylor. A lot of the MBA programs, like SMBU's MBA program, have MBA pro M, have internships where all of the students are encouraged to have a, a summer internship. And the one person that I know from that got a job up at with State Farm up in the Chicago area. But you can notice that the other the, the location is so if you were looking and you say, well, I'm only looking in Richardson, I don't want to go as far as Garland or Irving. You can check that box and narrow it down. Each time that you check a box like these, it will narrow the search down. Our original search, I think, had more than that. But right now, there are, if you notice, if they don't look at it, they're 2,000, almost 2,100. But by narrowing it to the last week, it narrows it down to 634. So a lot of jobs, when they're posted, get filled. At Shepard. I'm, I'm getting a ringing in my ear, so my wife took the call, so thank you for that. But those are some other ones. LinkedIn picked up from, from Indeed.com. They said some salary estimates. So if you want to look at jobs that are that are you know, are not interested in anything below 80000 or 75000 there's a button that you click. It's not the most precise salary survey, I must admit. My salary comp and benefits people that would look at that would kind of shake their heads in disbelief. There's a button up here that I isn't checked. It's called Easy Apply. If you want to do that, one caveat or warning that you want to take, if it does not allow you to upload your resume, what that means is you're going to simply submit your profile. And a, resume, and a profile that's not tailored to the job may not get really considered. So that's something to consider. So if it does allow you to upload a resume, something you want to do. Again, you can choose an industry, okay, for recruiters or across industries. But I mentioned healthcare. There's Here's, here's a healthcare firm or medical practice in the hospitals. Are firms that you can select. So filters are very, very good at that. When you do that, if you choose all filters and you say, well, my search as a recruiter, I want to refine some, I want to clear some of these out that I've selected, you can do clear, you know, take it back to your original search so you don't lose those. This is another job where I did quality assurance. I did a presentation for the Society for Quality Management here in Dallas uh, last summer. And they were looking, so we looked for quality assurance, but most of the people there were, were senior level quality people or, or managers. This would pick up the managerial positions, but again, when I did this search, it almost 2,000 jobs showed up, and that was just in the past week. But that's going to include inspectors and anybody that has that kind of background in terms of quality, in terms of a quality technician. So by changing it to quality manager, it narrowed the search down to 174, eliminated about 90% of the jobs that were there. 
And again, by, by going with salary and other things, you can limit this. This particular one is a quality assurance manager, has an estimated salary. They may have submitted that, or that may be, may be LinkedIn's guess about the salary of $125,000 to $135,000 a year. So that's just another way to find out information about that. Again, I did an executive assistant in Gallup over there in that particular one. Because I'd refined it, there were 960 results, okay? But as I said, I did it when I was with, with, Lee, with Lee Harrison, did searches for executive assistants to help some of those find a job. And there were probably about 3,500, about 25,000 jobs that were available in the area. So looking at that and refining with searches is a way that you want to do that. This one was for a recruiter, but I use this one particularly for examiners because it gives you the opportunity to turn on the job alert button. This one, in this case, if you click the button and move it to the right, you know, it gives you the option to choose whether you want to hear about new opportunities daily or weekly. Those will come in between seven and eight in the morning usually. And you can scan through those typically in you know five or 10 minutes to find any that you might be interested in. So this is what it looks like when the button is turned on. Okay, just in wrapping up, because I do want to allow some time if we have any time. I haven't been watching the clock, Jeff. I have got enough time to look, to look at some people's resume and help them find a job. First things I'll tell you in terms of some homework, complete the sections of your resume and use the name that you normally use. One that I've added, refresh your profile. Do something with it at least weekly. It'll improve the odds of you being in a search result. Use the headline or job title, or you can move, use multiple job titles, but use the headline, use job titles but not including a title at all will default to your last job, whatever that was. Complete the open to work section. That gives you the option to either check open to work for everybody to see it or just recruiters who paid for the license, okay? Again, if you're in stealth mode and some of you may be in a stealth mode working for a job, looking for a better job, you might wanna look that way. Do list your phone number and email on the first line of your about section. It could be multiple places, but again, if I'm not directly connected to you, I may only see the first three lines of your, your about section and your phone. I may not be able to connect with you in the contact information if you haven't opened that up. So that may be the only way that I can get in touch with you. It's disappointing from a recruiting standpoint of trying to find people. You find the perfect resume, but you don't have any way to get in touch with them. So list your email and your phone number on the top line of your about section. I know Jeff has got that in his banner. Okay, in Your experience section lists the job titles that are commonly used and show some measurable results. They add credibility to your experience. And do use the keywords and skills from your profession. Again, it shows that you have expertise in that area. And do choose the ones that reflect what you want to show up on LinkedIn. Because now that you have 100, you never know what LinkedIn might select for you. Or your skill or your search may change and you may be wanting to emphasize other things. Uh, that's about it, Jeff. I'm gonna turn this off and how do I do that? You want to stop sharing? Yeah, well, I want to go to, there we are. I'm up. I did it today, Jeff. Hey, very good. All right, see, after three years, we finally have it figured out. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you look in the, in the chat and see who would like us to look. This is my profile, yeah. if you will, on LinkedIn. Well, hold on. Uh, we've got a couple of questions that have popped sure. in. So let's get those answered first. Sean says, does LinkedIn need to be a mere copy of your resume? No, but they must be in sync with one another. There can't be different information in each one that disagrees. Because if, if, if it disagrees, it's a red flag for a recruiter. They're going to say something's not right here and may go on to the next profile or next resume. They yeah. don't have to agree. LinkedIn allows you in the about section to list 2,000 characters, which is a lot more than you have in a two-page resume. Right. And, you know, and, and the thing that, you know, Locke's really talking about here is the dates have to match exactly. If yeah. you have a date that doesn't match, it will throw a big red flag up to a recruiter. Recruiters, that's a red flag that recruiters don't consciously look for, but it's unconscious. They'll say, uh oh, what's, what's wrong here? And I know right. some of you have had two jobs at the same time. If you look at my profile, there are three or four jobs that I've had at the same time, but they were all part time positions. Right. Uh, Patty just happened to mention, I would recommend also getting recommendations from previous clients that you've worked with in addition to your former co-workers or managers. Good, good thought. I'm glad she brought that up. It's very important, particularly mm -hmm. if you're in a sales or consulting role. 
All right. Let's see. Akisha says, how do uh, how does LinkedIn top picks work? Do they hold more weight? I'm sorry. Link, LinkedIn what? How do lock, uh, LinkedIn top picks? Akisha, do you want to mention? I'm not really sure what you're talking about when you're saying top picks. I'm not either, so I'm not familiar Sometimes with Sometimes get emails from LinkedIn, and they in it, it says top oh, picks okay. just for you. So They've selected. They've gone through their computers, and that's to generate activity on your part. It may be also activity on somebody else's part that's posted a job, okay? And they pay to put, sometimes it used to be when you post a job on LinkedIn, and that's a good, another good point. Um, it costs $200 to post a job on LinkedIn, okay? And right. uh, recruiters, I never did pay, pay for too many jobs because I could use it, post jobs for free. Right. And you can All do right. that. Another thing that I mentioned that brings that up is in, in groups, and you'll have to search for it. I can't remember exactly where it is. Groups have listings of jobs within the group, which are not necessarily posted on the open LinkedIn network. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, she also asked, how do we tweak the alerts to make them real specific? And Akisha, are you talking about job alerts or just things that you get in your notification list? Well, the, the job alerts themselves. So you went through and you filtered all that stuff, and then you had the, there was a little toggle that said, "Create an alert for this." Yes. Sometimes okay. the alerts that it's, what you get back is just too much. I'm trying to narrow it down. What, do you, do what you could down if it's like recruiter, you could add senior recruiter, okay, or something like that. Add an additional verb or two, and, and say, so, uh, or noun, I guess I should say, if I'm getting my, my grammar correct, and see if that doesn't help with the search criteria. Again, wherever possible, and there's a drop-down list to list things, use the title that's on the drop-down list. Right. Uh, let's see here. David says, I've maxed out my alerts. How do I clear them out to make room for new ones? So he's gotten 20. You can have to, up to 20 job alerts. How do you go get rid of them? You, you turn one off. There's a button that you can turn. It's a radio button to move back to the left. Where's the button? Well, when you turn that job alert on, you turned it on by when you looked at a job. Yes. Okay. I can't I, it's yeah, in the I, slide found a, I found a company that I like. Uh, I didn't get, you know, I wanted to get an alert the next time another job like that popped up. So I hit the alert button, you know, to get an alert for that, a job that pops up at that company again. So I've maxed out on those and I can't add anymore. So well, I, think, I think the button, it used to be the button allowed you to go into that button when you had that open and turn that off. Yeah, I think uh, if you want to turn off alerts, if you go to the job tab, and then there's a the very first thing says my jobs. Yes. Click on my jobs. Uh, right in there, I think is where you can go through and you can uh, turn off. So under jobs, like right by that my network button and the messaging button, that one? Uh, yes. <clears throat> okay. I believe that's where it is. You'll have to play it around with it, David, and just see. Uh, I'm not familiar with how to do it because I haven't turned too many on, but usually I don't have that many. Another place that you can turn on job alerts is in groups. If they have job postings and you've searched for a particular company, uh, in within that group, you can turn job alerts on there as well. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Bye. Akisha says, how can we use AI or chat GPT to create job titles? To create job titles, you're again, you're not going to be able to do that with, with well, I say that because LinkedIn, LinkedIn is part of Microsoft and Microsoft is doing that now. But if the title is not a recognized <laughs> one when you have a drop down box, LinkedIn will not allow you to enter it. You know, I think uh, maybe what she's at, what uh, Akisha is asking here is that if you go to chat GPT, uh, you can go and say, show me similar job titles to, and then give them a job title. And chat GPT should come back, or AI should come back with, here are other titles that are similar to what you're looking, you know. What as, a for, as a, for example, recruiting, talent associates, staffing, uh, employment are all anonymous are things that, again, you can use functional titles as well to find additional titles. It's a way to find those. Um, let's see here. Renata just said you can turn off job alerts by clicking on preferences under the my job section. I just did okay. it yesterday. So 
Thank you. Hopefully, David, you found it. Okay, I see, I see my jobs. Okay, that's it's just not intuitive. Thank right. you. So the, <laughs> LinkedIn and LinkedIn will refresh itself on a regular basis. Kevin Turner is a gentleman that has probably the most up to date listings that he just put out within the last two weeks. Another listing of all the changes that LinkedIn has made recently. Right. Okay, uh, that's all the questions we've got in the chat window right now. I'll see, Kim, you've got your hand up. Yes, please. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I'm on a different device today. Um, I, on the topic of those job alerts, it, it is rather frustrating. It's not a very easy uh, to use interface. And if you do go to my jobs, preferences, you can then edit your, your job alerts. You've only got 20. But to Locke's point, if you go into an individual alert by clicking on the title and then use the filters, you can then add different companies. So you can actually build, if you like, a group job alert uh, for 10 companies, which, which then, you know, uh, will allow you to have possibly up to 20 different job alerts, each with 10 companies. Um, and hopefully that will, you know, broaden the, uh, the range of your searches. Now, what I found was that the, the default titles of those job alerts are, are not very helpful whatsoever. They kind of pick up on some random uh, profile that was used to create them. And I actually submitted a ticket to LinkedIn and, and, and spoke to support there and said, hey, you need to make these editable so you can actually put a common sense English language title <laughs> into those job alerts. You know, hey, I'm looking for um, companies in the tech sector you know, startups, for example, and have a group search that that, that, that has, uh, well, I guess it's unlimited, right? It doesn't you, you can keep on piling in the the, uh, the number of companies that you want to put under one job search uh, there by just adding them to the filter. Kim, thanks for sharing how you aggregate job alerts, but also the need to how you need to edit some of the titles. Again, it's not precise. Remember the old, old saw about computers, garbage in, garbage out there. I mean, what comes up and you see on the screen is only as good as what somebody input. So they need to be aware of that as well. Do we have anybody who's looking for a job or, or wants, wants us to take a look at their pro, their profile? Yeah, so if you want us to look at your profile, let us know and we will pop your profile up here. Just pop your name in the chat window or holler it out. Holler it out. Boy, I sound like I'm from Kentucky. All right, there we go. Kelly Lanier. Kelly. K-E-L-L-Y and last name L-A-N-I-E-R. There we go. You're connected to her. First one, I'm assuming. Kelly, is this the right one? Kelly, yes. is that you? Yes, that is you. That is her. Okay. Kelly and I are linked. I think we did so recently. We could... The contact information, that's another thing about freshness. I mentioned one of the things. We were connected. We've been connected since January. So, again, that's one of those things that in your profile, when you look at it, she has good information about her email and her phone number and how she can get hold of people. Again, if we're connected to her. There's her email and that email right, right there at the very top. All right. Again, that's another way to connect. Make it as easy as possible for somebody to connect with you because the more clicks that they have to do to find out how to get a hold of you, the less likely they are to do it. She's got her open to work section open. Good list of company or job titles that she has there. We're in a couple of groups together. Uh, she's only used, again, let's take a look at her about section. She has a good long one there. Okay. This one down here where she's listed her skills or job titles, areas of specialization, this is designed for the computer and not necessarily for easy reading by the reader. Okay. Because when they do their algorithm, they're going to search on a number of these different titles. Okay. You're, you're, Okay, you're seeking a position. So she's got a current position, even though she's looking now. She's been out since October. She was at Paramount uh, Networks on TV. And again, when I mentioned that you could see somebody, you can, we see three lines here and there's a see, mutton, see more button. Again, anytime that you can add an accomplishment or a result of doing a job as a bulleted item, 
she's got some of the skills are highlighted that she's gone to her skills and shown where the, she applied those skills. Okay, so that looks good. Again, part of the, another thing that you need to be aware of, uh, she took, I'm surprised that this showtime and this showtime are not linked that like these two jobs are linked together. And again, uh, LinkedIn will link that together. I know my Oracle experience is linked to my Siebel experience because Sie Oracle bought Siebel. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's doing that. I, I couldn't yeah. figure it out. She's got one recommendation. I would encourage you to get more recommendations. Okay. And it's okay to send somebody, you know, we work together. I wonder if you could do me a favor and, and send in a, a recommendation. I've just listed some of the things we did together. And if you want to you know, use that as a basis for sending a recommendation, please be, feel free to do so. And people yeah, will send a recommendation for you. I know I have, it's particularly important if you do it for your most recent experience. I have two more recs coming. Okay. Very good. Looks good, Kelly. I would say you're you're well on the way. The one, the one thing I would do is go back to her for her, uh, I have two questions. Go back to her first job she's got listed that she's currently looking. Where did you get that DFW logo at? So can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, we hear you. Okay. So someone posted it on LinkedIn saying, if you need it, need it to look like you're currently working, use this. So I just, I grabbed it and, and used it. Okay. And pasted, pasted it in when you did your edit for that, before you pasted it into the profile or when okay. you're doing it. Great. Looks good. Somebody else. All right. I uh, see. We had another name, uh, Alkesha Rodriguez. Uh, I think that's good. Uh, right there, very first one. Okay, full profile. And we are first degree connections. Okay, she's got a per good good headshot. Uh, she's Salesforce Talent Alliance. So she's had experience from a recruiting standpoint. It would appear when you look at that that she's worked with Salesforce, which is a software package that's in demand today. Again. This thing right here, Alicia, when you see that backslash like that, experience and success, put a space on either side of that backslash. Are those two words were not B6? You can't search on those. You've done it here, but you didn't do it here. Look on the little speaker. Let's see what she's got in there for her little sound bite. Where's the sound bite, Jeff? Right next to PMP. Right next to her name, there's that little speaker thing. Right up, up. This one? No, 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 no. Not there. Left. Right next to her name. Right next to her name. Okay. Right. Keep going right there. And then click on it on the very top up there. Oh, uh, we can't hear it because you're uh you didn't share your sound. That's okay. 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 I'll go look at it later. I was curious, I'd like to see what people put She's down. open to work. I want to see details if she where she's open to work on that because that's going to be something that you do when people are going. She's on work on site or part time off site, part time from home and on site, and she's open to Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, which is good, although that could mean an extremely long commute. And she's primarily looking for a new job, full time. Okay. Again, I would put. Because we're connected, out, I can see that, but in the first line of your about section, your contact information. Make it easy for me to reach because this is what recruiters or people see the first three lines. She's broken it up into three, four lines at a time. Some people put our contact at the information at the bottom. I just take that you know, and copy it if you want and put it at the top. You've got the space to work with, okay? You mentioned I play a vital role in innovating, building, and many. What was the result of that? Is there more? I successfully designed, evaluated, and tested, modified, and inspected, and maintained a wide range of program, and make it so that you've done something that you've done. Whether what were the results of that? Give an example if, if possible. She's got product management and agile methodologies experience as well. Okay. 
It's a great place to list the number of the programs that you worked on because it's another keyword match. Okay. Here you've mentioned manager project management. Oh, that's a search one. You were looking for a job. Okay. This was a contract slot that you were working on. Looks good on that. You were also a long experience with Verizon. So. She's got her list of licenses and certifications. Projects is there. Okay. She's got her volunteer experience at two. My volunteer experience is listed in my actual experience section because uh, I wrote my profile long before they developed their volunteer section. Okay. I think we've got time for one more, Jeff, either to look for somebody for a job or look at their profile. But, but you've got a good, good, good profile working. Uh, okay. Uh, next person was Kermit Smith, K E R M I T. Not yeah, unlike the frog. Kermit Smith. If I could Oops. type, I'd be dangerous. I'm still recovering from shoulder space. Uh, Smith. Kermit, which one? A bunch of you, Kermit. Okay, which one are you? Can you select them? Uh, go go to Kermit U Smith. Kermit U. Yes, sir. This one? Yes, sir. Okay. Picture seems like I need to do something with picture. Yeah, I get a better picture. Okay. You have somebody just do a you know, picture on their cell phone and you could take that and post it there. Those are okay as long as the background's pretty good. He's open to work. We're third degree connection. So one of the things I want to show you about that is a good example. This is all the information. If we're not directly connected that I have on Kermit, I couldn't reach out to him. All right. So let's go down and look at his his about section. And again, he's got his email at the bottom of his profile. I, I mean, about the about section. I'd put it also at the top. Or just move it to the top and put a phone number if you want people to pick up the phone and call you. Thank you. Um, I also would break up those paragraphs. I personally think three lines maximum, anything over four, people probably won't read because it's white space is good. Okay. Well, again, if you do that, use, use, use some blank space or use some asterisks or bullets to show what were some of the accomplishments when you did that. Over 28 years experience, okay? In real estate management, what type of real estate? Was it commercial real estate? Was it residential? No. Okay. Here's some of the things that you do. What was the biggest deal that you had? You mentioned multi-million dollar property. Multi-million dollar can be two million or it can be a hundred million. A well, and to, your, and, to, and to your point, I mean, the size might be one thing, but the number is something else too. So you're right about that a lot. So spell out the numbers when you can, you know, a hundred million, one, zero, zero, three, with six more, or five, six more zeros. And mentally it makes a bigger impression on our brains. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Looks like he's doing a contract gig at Valvoline in Houston. Well, Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix and Denver. Yeah, and, okay. and this, this is really interesting because I, I had uh, worked at Valvoline before, then worked at uh, Advance, and uh, Valvoline called me back up and said, hey, can you do some contract work uh, because uh, you know what we need. All right. You've got a good background, and there's a market for people like that. As a fellow Aggie, I'd say don't give up the her. Okay. The background. Okay. Skills. Again, notice he's only got two, two skills. He's got 50 that are there, and those may not be the ones that he wants to select. Teamwork and business development. Teamwork is not something that I normally a recruiter would normally search for. Business development would probably be one that I would do. So you can go when you when you take it. When you, when you do it in the pencil over here and, and choose the three dots, and a lot of those four bars will be over here, and you can drag and drop which ones you want to be on top. So business okay. development. Okay, so oh, drag and drop. Drag and drop. Pull them up to the top. Real estate development, definitely up there. Commercial real estate. So pick the two that you want people to see. I mean, that's the important thing. Which two? Pick the, the two or three. 
I think it's three. He only has two that they may have changed it. It may be two because you've got the skills where you use those skills. Right. I think they changed it to two and then they made, they gave you three recommendations now, but yeah. Okay. Lock, do you think it helps to have Texas A&M University on there? You bet. There's only, <laughs> there's only 500,000 of us in the country. So I have a question then about that's in the skill section while you're there uh, because it's using up uh, a lot, but it's like these job titles that you said that they search or skills anyway. So like I, I, I put myself as a brand development person or a branding. So there's brand development, branding and identity, uh, branding, brand strategy. They're, I mean, they're using up. I, I, would tend, I would tend to choose if you if that's all that you want, that's fine. But if there are other aspects of a job other than branding, I choose the other other one or two with that. Make it the top ones in your field. Take a and remember I said to refresh your profile periodically. If you're applying for a different job where branding isn't a part of it, go in and refresh the, that area. <clears throat> okay, so that's what I Yeah, because there's just so many of them used up and you don't know which one they're gonna choose. Right. 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 Again, if you're in LinkedIn, it doesn't take long, you know, five minutes to update and move stuff around in there. Well, and, and like to, to to that gentleman's point, I think that if you look at the uh job description yeah. just pick and choose some of the uh yeah. traits and uh attributes out of that yeah well and also don't forget your summary statement because like we saw earlier on one of the profiles people had somebody had all those keywords at the very bottom if you see new keywords put branding you know the five or six different ways that branding is listed there is there you know, a specialization? Also, you want to make sure that it shows up in your job descriptions of things you've done in the past. Okay. If anybody, we're running out of time, Jeff. If yep. anybody wants the presentation, lockalderson at gmail.com. I'll be happy to send you the presentation. Jeff, thanks for having me. I'll let you take it over again. Lock, thank you very, very much. And uh, happy new year. And I'm glad you're, uh, glad you made it through shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Shoulder, shoulder is this high now. All right, you okay. get this high. All right. Well, okay. next month, we want to see it above your head. It, it, and I'm sorry, lockanderson at gmail.com? Yep, it's I've got Alderson. it up on the screen right now. It's Alderson, not Anderson. Uh, Anderson will go to somebody I don't know. Oh, do I have it spelled wrong? No, you have it spelled wrong. I, right, oh. he was saying it wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's right there on the screen. All right, uh, Lock, thank you very, very much. All right, uh, next Tuesday, our LinkedIn presentation will be from Terry Sullivan. He's the founder of BuzzPro, a digital sales and marketing firm. He's going to talk about how to tell your key contacts and prospects who you are, what you do, and how you can help. Uh, the session will not be recorded. So if you want to see uh, Terry's presentation, you will need to watch it live. And it will be a little bit like drinking out of a fire hose because he throws a lot of stuff at you. But he does give you links to uh, some websites that you can download his career tips from. All right, if everybody will please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jeff Morris, promise to always send a link, a personal note whenever I send a LinkedIn request to connect with anyone. This includes when I use my cell phone or my computer. Uh, one of the things that Locke did not talk about is that there's white connect buttons and there's blue connect buttons. If you're using the desktop version of LinkedIn on a PC or Mac, uh, a white connect button sends the generic invitation. I don't know why you want to connect with me when you do that. I got four different requests today to join for people to connect with me. Only one person sent me a personal note. I connected with that person who sent me a personal note, but I don't know how the other three people saw me. I don't know where they found me from. So when that happens, click on the person's face. It will then take you to their profile. On their profile, you'll see a blue connect button. The blue connect button will send, allow you to send a personal note. Do that. Oh, there's, a, there's a more with three dots. You can click more on somebody as well, Jeff. If you're on, if you're using a cell phone, the blue connect button sends a generic invitation. You want to click on the little three dots off to the uh, right of that more of the connect button to send a personal note if you're using the mobile version. All right, Crew to FW Career USA, we're putting on training four days a week. Please join us tomorrow. The practice interview team, for those who live in the DFW area, will be meeting in person. I understand they have three different interviews scheduled. You'll be able to watch the interview of your choice. Um, so if you live in the DFW area, come join them. Christ United Methodist Church, 3101 Coit Road in Plano. 
For those who live outside the DFW area, if you're on my mailing list and it's the career, if it's the Career USA mailing list uh, list, you will get a uh, one of the 13 part lessons. You'll get session number two, the link to be able to go back and watch session number two. Uh, and I'll be putting out for those who live outside the DFW area every Wednesday what link you can watch for the very next session. But uh, if you live in the DFW area, first, second, third, and fifth Wednesdays of the month, the group is meeting in person. The fourth Thursday of the month, fourth Wednesday of the month, we will be online so you can watch a practice interview live online. Next Thursday, or this coming Thursday, uh, networking with Clayton Stockdall. Clayton is the leader of the career of the Fort Worth Career Search Network, uh, and he'll be presenting all of his presentation on networking. And then I mentioned earlier, this Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group meeting, we'll be talking about Crystal Nose, personality data for everyone you meet. So Crystal Nose is a program that uses artificial intelligence. It matches up what you, how you compare, and it looks at somebody's profile from LinkedIn and tells you how best to approach that person. So uh, Patty will be with us this Friday to talk about that. Uh, we are meeting in person, so if you'd like to come join us, uh, 3101 Coit Road, Christ United Methodist Church, you can come join us if you live in the DFW area. Otherwise, for those outside the DFW area, join us on Zoom or Facebook Live. If you'd like to join the Career DFW LinkedIn groups, we have a Career DFW group and a CareerUSA.org group. The Career DFW group, anybody can join. You don't have to live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. But I will be looking at your profiles, and I want to make sure your profiles are mostly complete. I'm pretty restrict. I mean, I'm if your profile is not mostly complete, why are you on LinkedIn? So, you know, populate your profile, make it easy for recruiters or anybody to find you, and then come join the group. This session has been recorded. It will only be on the CareerUSA.org or the CareerUSA YouTube channel, as since Facebook wasn't cooperative today, uh, on the Career usa.org website career usa youtube channel i'm sorry go to youtube type in career usa look for the little uh compass it says career because there's a couple different careers that will pop up when you type in career usa a couple other people have sort of uh started some channels but look for the little compass and click on playlist every video that i upload goes into a different playlist i've got 585 videos up there right now over the last three and a half years uh, pick the topic that you want, and then down where you see that red arrow, click on View Full Playlist, and up will come a list of the different speakers, dates, and topics, and you can go back and watch any of those at your convenience. If you're not receiving emails about a workshop, join the CareerUSA.org mailing list. Just scan this QR code or send a, uh, email to, a blank email to CareerUSA, the plus sign, subscribe at groups.io. You'll never be spammed, but what you will get is the title of the day, the topic of the day, and most importantly, the Zoom link of the day. Please remember, Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Locke is a volunteer. All of our speakers are volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Everything I've done over the last 15 plus years has just been to help you land your next great opportunity. So thank you very much for joining us today, everybody. Locke, once again, thank you very much. Everybody else, hopefully we'll see you later in the week. Thank you.